Cupcake Gemma channel with me, Gemma. Now, before I get on with showing you this amazing layer cake that I've got up my sleeve, I just wanted to tell you that we have a new range of products on the Crumbs and Doilies website. They're called Favourite Cakes, and they are literally my new favourite cake. <laughs> They're basically a range of some of our favourite flavours, the clear is in the title, um, but stripped back to their bare essentials and really simplified, but no less delicious and marvellous for your special event or really for no reason at all if you fancy a cake so there's going to be things like vanilla chocolate red velvet all the standard flavors but also carrot cake coffee and walnut we've got a delicious salted caramel there's going to be some really really lovely flavors so make sure you check that out we'll put a link to that in the description box below it's a two-day notice period so you know if you have a sort of last minute party that you need a cake for then give us a shout and we will knock up a favorites cake for you but don't worry all our regular amazing celebration cakes are still available and while this cake that i'm about to show you isn't one of those because it's got peanuts in it and we are a peanut free zone at the bakery it is definitely worthy of a celebration. So this is my toasty banana and peanut layer cake. It is so, so delicious. It's got a moist, fluffy banana sponge. It's filled with this amazing stuff called peanut praline and it is covered in this amazing toasted Swiss meringue buttercream, which is literally my new favorite thing to make and to eat and you're gonna love it. So let's crack on. So we're gonna make the sponge first. I'm gonna start with my big mixer and I'm going to put my very soft butter. You can see how soft it is here. Uh, squeezably, pressably, lovely and soft. So that goes in along with two different kinds of sugar going in. I've got caster sugar and also a little bit of light soft brown sugar as well. And I'm just gonna pop it onto my mixer with my paddle attachment. And I don't wanna beat this yet. I just want to sort of get it together um, just on a low speed, just to kind of combine everything. Right, that's about combined as I want it because now I'm gonna put the banana in. So we always tell you to wait for your bananas to be like really ripe. Sometimes we want them to be like black and kind of disgusting. <laughs> um, I personally think for sponge cakes, the best kind of banana is like this. So a really bright yellow skin, but with some dots. And the best is like when they go a bit kind of freckly. That's what I've got here. And I have um, mashed it up. It's gone a bit brown because it's been sitting around for about half an hour, but it is basically like banana soup. And if you can smell banana, it's good to go. If you can't and if your bananas are a little bit starchy, it's just not gonna give your cake a really strong banana flavor. Anyway, I've mashed it up. I'm gonna pop it in and then get it all beating together on a medium speed for about a minute. Now with this sponge, all the way along, you wanna just every now and then stop it and scrape it just to make sure that all the bits and bobs are getting incorporated from the sides and the bottom of the bowl, um, especially at this stage because butter is obviously very sticky and it doesn't blend super duper well with the banana. You'll notice it will go kind of curdly, but that is okay, but we do want it all to get involved. So every now and then, give it a little scrape. All right, they're looking pretty good. So you can drop your uh, mixer down to a low speed and start adding your eggs. So I've got six here. I'm gonna add mine one or two at a time. Sometimes when I aim for one, another one just like wants to come along for the ride. Oh, there they go. Pop them in and then beat them for about a few seconds really, like not that long after each one, just to get it all involved. And again, just stop and scrape it every now and then just to make sure it's all getting really well incorporated. Right, that's looking good. So now it's time for my dry ingredients. So I've already got my sifted self-raising flour. I'm gonna add some bicarbonate of soda to that and also a good amount of salt. I'm using, I'm actually using a quarter of a teaspoon, which is quite a lot, but it's gonna bring all those lovely flavors out. So zhuzh it about and then pop it in to your mixer and you wanna fold that in. You could do this by hand if you wanted, but I like to do it on the lowest speed of my mixer just to really gently fold it all through. Right, I wanna stop now. So when almost all your flour is mixed in, you can add some more ingredients. So I've got some natural yogurt here, some lovely unsweetened, unflavored yogurt, and also, because I want to add my own flavor, some vanilla, some good quality vanilla extract. And then 
Just fold that in as well on the slowest speed. You're gonna finish it by hand though. Now you don't wanna over mix it at that point because you've got all that lovely air in there and you don't wanna knock it out, classic rule of caking. Um, but I have sort of accounted for a little bit of finishing by hand. I like to get my spatula in there, not only to make sure that there isn't any sort of lurking bits of uh, unmixed bits and bobs at the bottom and sides. So just get your spatula in there and just really gently scrape the sides and the bottom and sort of fold it through the rest of the batter. So I've got four eight inch tins. I've already greased them. If you want to, if you don't trust your tins, you could also um, line the bases, um, but I do trust these tins. We've been together a long time. So anyway, as evenly as possible. And if you want to use your electric scales for this, I am here for it. Um, I actually normally do, but you don't need to see that. And then just use a palette knife to gently level them all out. Lovely, so now you just need to bake these. I've got my oven preheated to 170 degrees C. I'm going to bake mine for around 27 to 28 minutes. You wanna check them with a skewer and if they come out completely clean, they're ready. My cakes are out of the oven, they're cooling, they look and smell gorgeous. So now it is time to make the buttercream. Now this is gonna be toasted Swiss meringue buttercream. And I first saw this idea on uh, someone I follow on Instagram called I Bake Mistakes. You should check her out. She's got loads of really inspiring pictures and videos on her Instagram. And she, I saw this, I saw her making this and I thought, of course, toasting the meringue before you make it into buttercream like, I just don't know how it's taken me this long to like know that that was a thing you could do. I'm actually quite gutted about it. Um, anyway, since I <laughs> first made it, I've been dying to make a cake with it. It's so, so delicious. I really hope you give it a go. The one thing I will say though is you are going to need a blowtorch. This is not one of those recipes that I can say, oh, stick it under a grill for a few seconds because you really need to toast the heck out of this like multiple times and it's just not gonna work. And that's not such a bad thing because it does mean you've got a great excuse to buy a blowtorch. So get yourselves one of these. Um, but we're gonna start it off like any other Swiss meringue buttercream. So I have a bowl here. I'm gonna put my caster sugar in there and then my egg whites. It's half the amount of egg whites to twice the amount of sugar. That makes no sense, but you know what I mean. <laughs> One to two, if you will. Um, and just using a whisk, just gently stir that together. I like to do this a little bit before I start putting it on the heat, just to make sure the egg doesn't start cooking before it's incorporated. And then just continue to stir it with the whisk while heating it gently. Once all the grains of sugar are no longer detectable, transfer the mixture to the bowl of your stand mixer with the balloon whisk attachment. Get that whipping on a medium to high speed and when the mixture is glossy and white and holding soft peaks, you need to get your blowtorch out. Lift the head of the mixer up and torch the meringue as much as you can. Be careful not to hold the flame on the sides of the metal bowl for too long in case you touch it later. When you've flamed the bejesus out of it, drop the head and whisk all the burnt bits in. And then keep doing this over and over until you're happy with the torchiness. I like to do mine about 15 or 18 times to get just the right amount of torch. Now it will be hot, so whisk the mixture up to stiff peaks until it's cool, or you can pop it into the fridge for a few minutes if it ain't just cooling down. Then bit by bit, add your soft, unsalted butter, as usual, with the whisk whizzing round quite fast. And then lastly, you wanna add your flavors. So I've got a teaspoon of vanilla and half a teaspoon of salt. And then just give it one final whisk for about a minute or two, just to make sure all those flavors are really combined. And then you have lovely, silky, tasty, torchy buttercream. Let's decorate this cake, y'all. So I've got my delicious banana sponge, really moist and smelling really deliciously of banana. I've got my toasted Swiss meringue buttercream, which quite frankly is sexy AF. Look at that, 
Oof. And I also have this stuff. So this is peanut praline. If you don't know what that is, it's basically nut brittle or nut praline that's been whizzed up into a liquid. And it's really easy, surprisingly easy to make. So all you need to do is start by making a wet caramel in a saucepan, just with your sugar and some water. And then set it over a medium heat and without stirring it at all, just let it come to a boil. Leave it to do its thing. It does take a little while, but don't go too far because eventually it will start to color. It'll become a rich amber color, at which point turn the heat off. Let the bubbles subside a little bit before tossing in your peanuts. Now I chopped these a little bit beforehand. Use a heat proof spatula to stir them around um, just to coat all of them in the caramel and you want to do this quite quickly so that the whole lot doesn't like begin to seize and solidify which would be really annoying. And then pour the nuts out onto a sill pat or a tray lined with greaseproof paper and then spread them out a little bit before leaving them to cool completely. Once they're cool, just break a little bit off, about a quarter, and then chop that into little pieces. That's gonna be for your decoration. And then with the rest of it, pop that into a food processor and you wanna blend it. Now this will take a little while, can take up to 10 minutes. All that will break down completely. And then eventually you'll end up with this lovely golden liquid, which is basically like the world's most luxurious, delicious peanut butter. I mean, you could probably have it on your toast and you probably should, uh, but I'm gonna use all of this in my cake. So to start with, as per usual, stick your cake on the first layer onto your cake board with a little bit of buttercream just so it doesn't slide around. And I'm going to build my sponge up with a good schmear of this lovely, lovely toasty Swiss meringue buttercream. I'm gonna spread that out with a crank palette knife until it's all over the place. Then I'm gonna use the same palette knife to remove a little bit of it to make way for that peanut praline. I'm just gonna blob a bit of that on, level it off as well before I continue doing the rest of my layers in the same way. Then I'm gonna apply a crumb coat just in the usual way, so applying quite a bit of icing and then smoothing it out to remove the excess just to lock all those crumbs in. I'm gonna whack that into the fridge for at least 20 minutes. He's chilled, he's lovely and cool to the touch and set. So we need to decorate him with a beautiful top coat of the lovely, lovely toasty Swiss meringue. So just in the normal way, applying lots and lots of lovely buttercream, smoothing it all out, and then using your palette knives to remove some of the excess and a cake scraper as well, just to remove some of the excess from the sides and smooth it all into a lovely, lovely smooth top coat. And then once you're happy with your top coat and it's lovely and neat, you can then just decorate it however you choose. You can use any sort of piping nozzle, you can leave it plain if you want, put blobs on. I'm gonna just throw caution to the wind and just do what I feel like in the moment. And then use some of that lovely brittle that we kept back to one side to decorate. I've also got some banana chips. I mean, it's a, bit, a little bit crazy, but I like it and I cannot wait to eat it. I'm so excited for you guys, for you tasting this toasted Swiss meringue buttercream for the first time. Well, if it is for the first time, maybe, maybe your old hands at it by now, I don't know. Anyway, it's time to get slicing. Let's have a little peek inside. Look at that. Oh, guys. It smells so, so tasty. It smells really banana-y and there's a real sort of caramelly, toasty thing going on in my nose. Got the peanuts. 
Hang on, hang on, let's just, uh, middle? Yes, middle. Right. A bit more icing though. Mm-hmm. Wow. This is, this might be one of the best cakes I've ever made. <laughs> Big words, but I think they're appropriate today. That is so nice. Do you know what? The peanut part of this could have easily overpowered everything else, but because it's just enough, like it's not anywhere else but these little layers and then a couple of blobs on top, it's so, so lovely because you, you get to taste all the other flavors without being sort of punched in the face with peanuts. And this icing, so subtly toasty. It smells so good and it looks so pretty as well. Mm-hmm. This is so delicious, guys. I can't wait for you to make it and eat it with your own mouths. <laughs> um, we are actually going to be doing a version of this in the shop. The shop is a peanut-free zone, so what we're gonna do is a cupcake version of this, but with hazelnuts instead of peanuts, and it is so, so lovely. So if you're in town this weekend, make sure you pop to the Crumbs and Doily shop. I'm waving my fork around. I'm threatening you <laughs> with my fork. Gotta get to the shop. Get yourself one of those, and even if that's not there and you miss out, then there are tons of delicious treats for you there. And in the meantime, if you make this, please do ta ha hashtag us using Cupcake Jenna. Make sure you check out the favorites page on the Crumbs and Dolly's website if you're in the UK, well, not in the UK, if you're in London and you want a cake and you are desperate and you don't want to make it yourself, head over there, order a cake, we will make it for you and it will be the best party ever. And um, yeah, I, I listen, I'm waffling because all I really want to do is just keep eating this cake, so I'm gonna have to get rid of you. Goodbye. <laughs>